Hello, my lovely ladies and gents. Welcome. This is my show, Thrift to Vintage, where I transform used, unloved, sometimes a little bit daggy thrift store clothes, and I transform them into beautiful vintage style outfits. Today's video, of course, I'm going to show you how I transformed a just plain men's shirt and I transformed it into this 1930s inspired blouse using all the fabric of the actual shirt is all here somewhere. <laughs> so if you're into thrifting, vintage style, uh, sewing, of course, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you hit that subscribe button right now. So let's do a little time travel and head back to the beginning. As you might know already, around here we always start with a good plan first. And well, even the inspiration before the plan. So the inspiration for this piece is really this blouse here. So let's have a little look. Okay, so can you see here, there's a lovely, lovely little white one underneath uh, this, um, this one here. So I really, really wanted a long sleeve shirt, something, it's uh, winter where I am now, so it's a little bit cold. And I really kind of wanted this, uh, this frilly neckline that this has got going on. I'm really wanting to recreate mostly this neckline and something long sleeved and making that work. So I kind of pieced the design together and made a little sketch just to kind of um, put it onto paper and see where my mind was at with it. So starting with this lovely uh, white and light blue striped men's shirt, I think I'll be able to recreate this pretty well. So the idea is I will kind of take off the sleeves first and then fit the sort of blouse on myself. So I'll probably uh, narrow the shoulders, take it in, um, possibly add some darts for a bit of fit and shorten it. That way then I can figure out how much extra fabric I have to play with to actually then create this uh, like the frill and everything because I can only use what I've got in here. Maybe if it comes to it the frill might have to be from like a light voile cotton or something but hopefully I will be able to have enough of the length of the bottom to create that little frill with a little lace trim I'm thinking hopefully. So that's the plan of attack uh, to start with. Then of course it'll be put the sleeves back on and you know tailor those in to fit as well and probably crop them to maybe kind of I'm thinking maybe here. Uh, I'll possibly use the cuff that's on here or maybe just a little lace uh, trim to match the, you know, the little frilly part here. Um, basically, I'll see what it looks like as it goes along with most things uh, and as it's come, like, as it's coming together, it gives me a much better idea of what it looks like and I can judge what I like best. So let's deconstruct this first and get the general fit of it before we play around with all the fun frilly parts. Now I'm going for an early 30s look for this one. So what I want to do is actually, uh, on the shoulder seams here, I want these to be nice and slopey. I'm not going for a puff sleeve. So actually unpicking this seam here to bring the shoulders down. And I went ahead and took off the collar. Always pull off all the little threads. So always clean up those little threads before you go ahead and pin and restitch this down. Because if you stitch those little hairy threads in there, a lot harder to get out afterwards. So I have roughly pinned in some bust darts, some darts at the back just to give a bit of shape but I realized before I go, sorry really noisy plane, before I go any further I really need to sort of mark in where I want my shoulder point to be so then I can shape it around properly to then be able to create my side seams. Don't pin your clothes when you do this. 
I've marked my little uh, finished shoulder point here that I would like and another one here so I can get that line. So I'm just trying to get a pin here to kind of get an approximate of where I would like it to sit so I can get an armor hole size and it's going to help uh, this next part. I'm going to take it off and sort of repin, rejig and get all of this actually fitting and I will pin it all before I sew it though. Fitting time. So this is just all pinned at the moment. So these darts are pinned, these darts are pinned, all of this is only pinned because I've taken it all apart. There's a huge amount of changes and it needs to be, ow, yep, caught, okay. It needs to be uh, fixed and sorted and checked before I sew it because I don't like unpicking more than I have to already. I am going to take this up a little bit more at the top here just to take out a bit more of that fullness because I'm really looking for a soft shoulder on this design and this is a huge big men's shirt for big men's shoulders that I don't have remember so uh, I'm going to use the top button here as my uh, guide that will be the top fastening of uh, the design hmm. actually uh, looking at this one, you can see she's a little bit, uh, it, it starts a little taller and then when I think about the proportions, because I want a, a section from somewhere, haven't figured out where that fabric is coming from yet, uh, so if I do have this sort of sectioned off area, I think that it would be better to actually start up higher and then think about a little panel coming from here and then the ruffles coming from there I think that will be a much nicer spot for them to to actually start so I'm going to use that second button then as my guide where my new neckline will sit and then I'm also going to shorten this uh, I'm going to do cut this off um, adjust this actually sew all this up put the sleeve back on and then I can actually start um, doing some of the fancy finishes because this sort of base construction and resize will then be done. So, sewing time. the deconstruction and the reconstruction and it is coming back together so the fit is good now I really have to figure out this collar situation I have like uh, let me show you so these pieces here all these scraps got this one big bit these tiny little things that that is all of the fabric that I have left so I have to figure out this uh, collar situation. I have these larger bits. This is uh, folded in half, but I really need um, something here. Something. Okay, I'm just gonna think on this for a minute. This sort of thing is always a huge play on proportions. Uh, getting the right amount of uh, here to the right length here and playing around with that to get it all in balance with then the top and myself. It's all about proportions. 
Okay, I think I'm going to go with this sort of squarish kind of little, I don't even know what to call it, <laughs> little yoke piece and then frill something like this. I'm thinking with the um, lace on the bottom and then I have two different cuff options. I have a cuff or maybe the lace or maybe the lace on the cuff. Haven't decided that one yet. I've played around quite a lot uh, with this little tab, different sizes. I've actually gathered um, the pieces, put the lace around the whole edge and have gathered this piece up to create that frill and out of tiny little scraps created <laughs> this piece here. So I like, I think I like um, this, this here, how it is. Uh, I'm going to make the other one and then play around with their placements, uh, put them in the right spot and then actually do the binding around the edge of the neckline and cuffs and hem and we're almost done. I'm getting there. Pretty much done. A little bit of hand stitching, uh, this down at the back. The big question is what to do with these sleeves. So I have first of all stitched up the little uh, um, placket on here. It's a very telltale male men's shirt look. I may actually put some buttons or something along there. I do know I want to keep the fullness and, um, and actually pleat it in down here with some gathers. And I think I'm going to add the cuff back on on top of that so the pleats kind of come out from, from here and you get that fullness. I'm just going to keep playing around with the cuffs with different pleating and putting the cuffs on. Finish that up. I did the hem already and there's just that hand stitching so there's not much more to do and it is getting very late now and I need my beauty sleep so I think I'm going to head to bed and do this tomorrow. Oh and I will likely put some change of buttons as usual anyway. This is the next day. So I've come back downstairs and I'm just uh, looking at the blouse and particularly these cuffs and they really need something to finish them with. I knew that when I was doing it, but I just didn't know what. The trouble is I have this much lace left. I mean, what am I supposed to do with that? Luckily, I have had a stroke of genius, I think, and I have come up with a little plan. That, I'm not going to sort of boil the surprise. I will now show you the reveal after I do the, the thing on the, the cuff. this one. Now, as always, the creative process is a process and as you go along with the design, it evolves as the whole project evolves. So what might I have done differently? Well, after having actually worn this and put this on, I thought it might be nice if these little side bits on this side opened so I could put a scarf through here and tie it up underneath. That would have been a really cute little addition. And had I um, known how the fastening was going to be up the top here, I might have uh, done something a little bit differently. But I decided to uh, accessorize this one. I just put a little brooch to finish. Uh, obviously like 1930s style hat and some feathers. Um, I'm really, really happy with the cuffs. I like how they fit and that's a little bit puffy. 
I mean, I could have made this more fitted, but I kind of have enough really tight fitted tops. I really would like something a little bit looser and more easy to wear. So this has turned out really, really nice. I love this. Is beautiful. As always, through showing you my processes and how I do the transformations that I do is in order, I hope, to inspire you and to give you a few ideas and skills, tips, tricks, uh, so that you can do this yourself. Do leave a comment below. I really enjoy reading them. Uh, I love reading your creative ideas and you know how much, uh, if you got an inspiration from this, I just, I love reading it. So leave those below. I hope this has inspired you and given you some more creative ideas on how you can do your own refashions and reuse some of the garments such as just a men's shirt can be transformed really easy with a little creativity and a few sewing skills is all you need. So leave those comments below and until next time, bye. Uh, okay, I've packed everything up and getting undressed now. You know what the only trouble with using a man's shirt for this process is that the buttons are backwards. So they should be, like this side should be over that side, but this is over that side. And did you know that? That women's shirts go right over left and men's are left over right?